the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A blessed day, a blessed evening to all of you, those who are joining us through this uh, live stream celebration of the Mass here at the Shrine of Jesus, the Divine Word. As I used to do in, during these weekdays that I uh, focus the reflection on the first reading. Today, uh, we continue to uh, meditate on the readings, readings that are taken from the so-called uh, post-exile writings, meaning around uh, the 5th or 6th century before Christ after the exile of the, the people of God from Babylon there were several writings and one of them we have heard today that of the prophet Haggai and one of the chief concerns of these writings several writings the so-called post exile writings is the reconstruction of the temple of Jerusalem which when they returned from Babylon it was in ruin and that was the concern of, uh, of uh, these writers now one of the concerns main concerns because there there was this idea that uh, the temple that God must have a temple now. And uh, in today's reading, the Hebrew people started to reconstruct that temple of Jerusalem after their Babylonian exile. It is precisely to this enterprise which continues very slowly that Haggai, the prophet, we have heard today, dedicates his preaching, his first preaching, in fact, about the reconstruction of uh, this Jerusalem temple. The prophet Haggai, in a, a fairly simple words, plain words, lashes out against the lack of passion or inertia of the leaders of the community in this rebuilding no it passed already according to the first reading two years after their arrival and they were moving so slowly no so the prophet Haggai Reads against them their stinginess of these returnees. They were not very generous and they were not very committed in the reconstruction of the temple, which, according to historians, would be completed only after five years. That's why we hear the uh, the preaching of uh, Haggai today a bit uh, harsh in his uh, in his words against this lack of commitment of these people in the reconstruction of uh, the temple the appeal of the prophet Haggai therefore is transformed into a kind of a critique to their egoism and exaggerated individualism against excessive privatization and the narrowing of their social horizons which is also our experience in the contemporary society the words of the prophet interrogate us believers 
of the quality of our sense of community and of our fraternal relationships. What can we learn from this? On the concern of the prophet for the reconstruction of the temple. Does God really need a temple? As a young religious priest preparing uh, for the missions, I remember that uh, uh, we were uh, reminded very often by our formators in that missionary work is not primarily about building construction but they insisted on the formation of a vibrant Christian community. The thinking is that even if you have beautiful buildings, churches, but if you have a lousy community, if you do not have committed Christians, what's that for? No. So the uh, emphasis they had uh, brainwashed us now going to mission it is not your task they said no to be builders of physical temples or churches primarily our mission is to form communities vibrant communities but uh, my experience too in working in the missions, particularly in Argentina, that uh, although this is not, the construction is not the main concern, but as the com I observe that as a community, Christian community grows and matures, and as the people see their material needs, for example, of the community, for uh, a church, a chapel, and this community start to form and build their own. And I observe that when a community that is formed well, it's easier to launch projects such as construction, physical construction for for their needs in fact i saw that such projects strengthen the members of the community in their relationship with each other and uh, becomes their projects becomes a manifestation of their maturity as a christian community that's why on the one hand, yes, it is true that uh, the, uh, the emphasis is on the community, but also on the other hand, there, as the community matures, they would produce, they would, have, would see their need for such beautiful temples, churches, as a testimony also of their unity and of their mature faith. Does God really need a temple, a house in our midst? Strictly speaking, God being a spirit, I think doesn't need a temple. The whole creation is His. Is his. But we limited creatures are the ones in need, I think, of particular places, particular times as markers and reminders of our need to encounter God. So temples, church buildings, chapels, days, special occasions like Sundays, Christmas, etc. are signposts to remind us of our vocation and need 
to be in communion with God and with one another. In the final analysis, God's insistence of the rebuilding of the, Jerus the temple in Jerusalem through the prophets is for the people and not for him primarily. God wishes to remind us of our calling to be in communion with him and with our fellow followers. The temple, the church, is a symbol of our vocation to communion. May we grow in our awareness and our commitment to, uh, towards communion, towards unity as followers of God. And when there is, as I've said, vibrant Christian community, it is easier to pursue projects like building monuments that would help us or temples that would help us grow in our communion with each other and with God. May the Lord who has called us as his children grow in our desire towards communion, towards communion with him and towards our communion with each other. And that is what the temple, the church stands for, that we are called to communion, to unity as children of God.